Hi guys, Dr. Dillard here. Let's go through week seven GIGU lab where the the topic today is how to palpate the abdomen. Okay, now as before, make sure you go listen to my lecture video. I have like a half hour lecture which will get you ready for this because I'm not going to go over everything. So palpation of the abdomen, there's two types of palpation. Uh, so there is the soft palpation, which looks like this. And you're gonna gonna split everything up into quadrants, right? We have a right and left upper, or we have a right lower quadrant, we have a right upper quadrant, we have a left upper quadrant, and we have a left lower quadrant, like a tic-tac-toe board, kind of, or no, like a crosshairs. All right, so light palpation, I'm not going down more than probably about that much, uh, like maybe an inch at the most. And we're checking every nook and cranny of this quadrant. So if you're asked to palpate, so palpate the right lower quadrant, and then you have to say, do you want me to deep palpate or do you want me to superficial palpate? This is superficial palpation. But make sure you hit every part of the quadrant. If you split this up into a X, if you put a crosshair through this, you can do each kind of sub-quadrant of the right lower quadrant. We're really looking for lipomas and things like that. This is not deep palpation. So we go up to the right upper quadrant. Remember the costal margins right here comes down, so we won't be able to do like a little square here. So it's kind of like a triangle. We'll do three up here where the liver is. And then we can do one right down in here. And that pretty much covers the quadrant. Same thing here. We have the costal margin. Uh, so we can do a little triangle, three here. Feels great. Okay, you get the idea? Do I have to do the last one? The last one's back to kind of a box form. All right, feels great. So that is superficial or kind of soft palpation. Uh, next, you warn now. I'm not going to go super hard on her uh, because her, she's not feeling the greatest today. But you would probably go a little deeper than what I'm going to show you. So at least you're going to hit the midpoint of each quadrant when we do this. And for deeper palpation, you're not going to go in circles. You're going to go back and forth like this. All right. Um, I have her legs under a roll right now, so her abdomen is very relaxed, but put a pillow under her the back of her knees to flex the knees a bit. And you're going to go like this. You can use a two-handed approach. I would normally go a little bit deeper in this. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, she's okay. Uh, so at least go through like this. You might bump into the liver here, right? Because the, the liver, we'll talk about palpating the liver next time. But you could bump into the liver here. And she seems to be doing okay. So at the very least, go in the center of each quadrant and you're feeling the deep structures. If they're amenable to the procedure and don't aren't acute, you could actually do that, uh, do that quadrant, that sub-quadrant thing again, where you really check every nook and cranny. And then here it would be like a triangle would actually be, if the liver was enlarged, we might even bump into it here. That's how deep you would go. It would do the triangle thing again here. So it all depends what you can get away with, how sensitive they are. If they're not that sensitive, go ahead and check, uh, check everything. Okay, uh, so that's pretty simple. That was deep palpation. Uh, next, so you don't have to do this on everybody, but if, if they do have an Audi belly button, you probably want to put your finger in there and just to poke it, make sure it's not rock hard, right? We talked about some uh, lymph nodes, Sister Mary Joseph's nodules, that could be a sign of cancer, right? Those would be rock hard belly button, uh, little nodules that could kind of resemble a umbilical herniation. So she doesn't have anything like that, so there's no need to do that on her. The next part of the exam is we're going to assess the abdominal aorta. So the abdominal aorta, this would be the midline. Abdominal aorta lives right in this region right here is where you can, where you can palpate it. Uh, so again, I'm not going to go super hard on her, but you want to take both fingers like this and slowly work your way down there. 
and you should be able to feel it in, in most people. Uh, and that's what I could have her take a breath. Can you take a little breath of air for me? And blow the air out. And as she blows out and hold it for me, you can sink down further and further. Uh, and I can feel it pulsating already. And it's really skinny. It shouldn't be like this. Okay, you can breathe if you're not breathing. Uh, it shouldn't be like this. I mean, some people have aneurysms here the size of a golf ball or uh, what's like a racquetball size. Uh, you shouldn't be able to feel the borders like that. Hers is really skinny, uh, and it, it's about this big on her. Okay, I hope you can see that okay in the video. All right, so that is the other thing we need to do. Now, we talked about appendicitis. Uh, so where's McBurney's point? So I can palpate her... ASIS is right here, that little hip pointer bump, belly button. Go about two inches. McBurney's point is right there. Robin says it's a third of the way, so it would be about the same, maybe about three inches. So Bates and Robins are off a little bit. It should be right there. So remember the signs of appendicitis. Early on it starts out as a diffuse pain around the umbilicus. Uh, she's going to be sick, maybe nauseated, maybe throwing up, or maybe a fever. But then it isolates right to McBurney's point. Really bad sign that it's appendicitis if it does that. There, if it, it, They don't always isolate there, though. They can be kind of tricky sometimes. There are two tests I'll show you, the, the Rofsing sign. Uh, so Rofsing sign and the rebound tenderness for appendicitis are both done in the left lower quadrant. And Rolfsing's sign is you just take your fingers right in the middle of the quadrant and slowly sink them down there and that's it. Um, so you can see I'm going, and I would go further on her but she's not feeling good so I won't go any further than that. And you hold it, there, there's no rebound on this part. So Rolfsing's sign, if she says, oh I got pain, where do you have pain if she points right to here? or anywhere really in the right lower quadrant. By pushing in the left lower quadrant, really bad sign that it's not only appendicitis, but it's probably, she's got some peritonitis going on. It's probably ruptured. Okay, so that's the Rolfsing sign. Rebound tenderness, a rebound test for appendicitis is exactly like the Rolfsing sign. And there's several ways. We're going with Bates, the board book, is how I'm teaching you. There's several different ways to do this, but you, you do the same thing like Rolfsing sign, push down, push down, and without warning her, you suddenly pull your hands up like that. Okay, I'll show you one more time. Okay, both of those tests push the peritoneum, the parietal peritoneum down. Um, and if it's inflamed, it'll actually pull the peritoneum around the appendix. And so you're kind of indirectly tugging on the appendix by pushing down here. If the appendix, if the peritoneum of the appendix is not inflamed, it's not going to do anything. Uh, but if it is inflamed and you mess around over here, you're actually pulling on the appendix because it has its own little appendiceal uh, peritoneum that's around it. Uh, and that can be inflamed. All right, I think that's actually it. Yep, that is it. So I will see you in the next video.